The disciples had just seen Jesus taken up to heaven. Before he was taken up to heaven, he gave them a giant task to tell everyone in the ends of the world who Jesus was and his message of forgiveness and salvation. This was a huge task, especially because the disciples now knew they had to do it without the help of Jesus. But he did promise them a helper. He promised them a gift, but he made them wait in Jerusalem for that gift to come. And so the disciples sat huddled together in a room waiting for their gift. Have you ever had to wait for a gift or a surprise? Have your parents told you there's a surprise coming, but you don't know when you're going to get it? Or maybe you have to wait for Christmas morning or your birthday. All of those times, there's this anticipation and this mystery that all kind of mix together. That's part of what makes a surprise so exciting. The disciples were in that same situation. God had promised them a gift, but they weren't quite sure what it was going to be or when it was going to come. So there they sat, waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. Ten days had passed since Jesus had been taken up to heaven right before their eyes. And I'm sure a lot of them were starting to wonder, how much longer do we have to wait to get this gift? At that moment, the sound of a strong wind filled the room. Oh my God! Oh my God. What is this going on? And over the disciples' heads, something strange started to form. It looked like flames, small flames, just forming in midair. Flames? Flames? And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit filled the room, and each disciple was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when they opened their mouths, different languages came out, languages they didn't even know. At the same time in Jerusalem, there was a feast going on called Pentecost. Pentecost is a feast that happens 50 days after Passover. You may remember that Jesus was crucified during Passover. And Pentecost would draw people from all over the surrounding countries and they would descend on Jerusalem for this feast. So there were people that spoke a lot of different languages all in Jerusalem at the same time. In all the excitement, a huge crowd had soon gathered around the building where all of the disciples were speaking in different languages. And they were surprised to find out that people were speaking their hometown language. Are you speaking Egyptian? I heard them say something in Latin. I heard something in Greek. Oh my gosh, I heard somebody speak Mesopotamian. I heard someone say something in Assyrian. People were interested because they'd heard their own language being used to praise God, and it's something they'd never heard before. They couldn't believe that a couple of guys from some rural place like Galilee would know their languages. They started asking themselves, what does this mean? And so as a crowd gathered, Peter looked outside and realized it was time to say something. So for the first time in his life, he stood up and addressed the crowd and told them the good news about Jesus. The prophet Joel spoke long ago, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The crowd was silent, hanging on Peter's every word. They couldn't deny the miracle they'd just heard with their own ears. And so Peter continued addressing the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles and signs, which God did among you through him, as you know. He was handed over to you by God's set purpose, and with the help of wicked men he was put to death by being nailed on a cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. What Peter was saying could have easily gotten him arrested. The religious leaders were still trying to arrest and keep quiet anyone who wanted to talk about Jesus and especially talking about Jesus rising from the dead. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter spoke boldly to the crowd. God has raised Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of the fact Exalted to the right hand of God, he received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. Therefore, 
let Israel know this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, Lord and Christ. When the people heard Peter say this, the Bible says they were cut to the heart. Has something like that ever happened to you? Where something someone says stings because it's true? The entire crowd felt that way. I'm sure a lot of them had seen Jesus do miracles in person. I bet a few of them were even present when he fed the 5,000 just a few months earlier. And so the entire crowd responds by asking Peter, what then shall we do? <laughs> Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. So that day, more than 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus and were baptized. This was the start of Jesus' great commission, his charge to the disciples to go out and tell everyone the good news about Jesus. And that mission still continues to this day.